Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the Technology Firm. Uh, today I want to walk you through something really simple, really quick, and I think you're going to get a lot of value out of it. It's about testing, right? Testing performance. So, um, client got a brand new internet connection, it's an upgrade, and we're trying to figure out if the old routers need to be replaced with new routers. He has a whole bunch of stuff just laying around, and we're trying to find out, uh, can he just get by with what he has, or does he have to buy new equipment? So the new connection is actually one gig and the old one was only 10 meg. So the, it's kind of apples and oranges as far as performance goes. So here's what we did. We have a client, a wired connection, no Wi-Fi, wired connection to the actual router that we're gonna test. And then that has a wired connection to the internet slash speedtest.net is what we're using. Now this could be another PC with iPerf, it doesn't matter. As long as you keep it consistent, then you know uh, you're in good shape. As far as the client computer goes, I've done lots of videos on iPerf and running a test internally in your laptop or desktop, and that way you can determine how much throughput it can handle internally before it goes out the Ethernet card. So I'm running an Alienware, and my Alienware can generate about 2.5 gig internally. I know that. Uh, so the Ethernet port is not an issue. I can swamp a 1 gig port, no problem. So no other apps are running in the background, no Outlook, no Spotify, nothing, right? Shut it all down, just only have up, in this case, my web browser, or if you use iPerf, just the iPerf app. Take five measurements, drop the high and the low, average, or use the remaining three. In this case, I used the remaining three, and you'll see that in the next table, uh, but in a lot of cases, I just average them out. It's up to you. As far as the router goes, we wanna keep it all consistent, right? So the very first thing you do, reset them all to factory, and then only provide what you need to get on the internet. In this case, PPOE and off to the races. In some cases, you might have to configure NAT or PAT or whatever, uh, but don't get carried away. Don't, don't be enabling firewall rules and all that kind of jazz yet. Don't do that uh, because you want to find out what you get with no real load or extra load on the device as far as configuration goes. And then after you get your initial numbers, then you can start adding on TACUS and SSH and all the kind of stuff you want and then watch to see if it affects your throughput or more importantly by how much. In this case the router is wired to the internet connection, the modem, the transceiver, it doesn't matter what you have but try to avoid having the router go through a whole bunch of other switches and cabling, uh, patch panels, floors and all that kind of jazz. Keep it physically in close proximity um, as close as possible, right? So here's the results. Uh, it didn't take long to do the test. We've got the PC direct up and down, and we're talking mid 800 megs up and down, which is good. If these numbers were skewed, uh, like 800 up and 20 down, or 20 down and 800 up, uh, then we might have issues with um, the fiber, the signal, the connector, half full duplex mismatches, all that kind of jazz. So you want to use a good baseline, in this case the PC direct, right? And that's our baseline, that's our point of reference. Then we have this uh, Edimax or Edimax, everybody pronounces it differently, I don't know what's right or wrong. And I put the model number here. You can see that it's uh, a lot more, and I say a lot more, it's relatively speaking, because you know when you do a throughput test, things can change a little bit here and there, but I'm going to call these two about the same, right? Uh, and sometimes you do get a little bit more of a performance boost if these things are buffering or caching and that kind of stuff, it skews the number a bit, but they're close enough for me. And then they have this little ubiquity edge router, um, little uh, four or five port jobber, really nice little box. And you can see it taps out, I'm gonna say mid 300, so to speak. Um, and now we can compare direct, router one, router two, and make the appropriate decision. In this case, these Edimax wireless routers, uh, they had a few of them around because of a project, and it's a remote office. We're not talking a bit of big corporate install here. Uh, that seems to fit the bill just right. Uh, and the big plus too about this thing, it also has a built-in VPN server. Uh, so that way people can VPN into the office without buying additional hardware. Now, again, once you figure this out, you can go ahead now, go back to the router and turn on all the kind of stuff you want to turn on, rerun your test and see how it goes. So I hope that helps. Have a good day. Bye for now.